Don't try this at home. We didn't. Everyone knows that there are hazards involved when using guns, but when using them on a film project, all too often there's an assumption that these hazards just go away, and about once a decade those assumptions prove fatal. Hi, I'm Jay, and I'm taking a small crew of shooters up to a private range to see exactly how much damage can be done with just blanks. We begin with a safety brief. Every member of the crew goes over what needs to happen if there's an emergency. With live ammunition on the set, none of us are in the mood to take any chances. That's right, I said live ammunition. The earliest known fatal accident involved a real 44 Magnum revolver loaded with blanks. So as a control group, we're going to hit one of our targets with a real 44 loaded with real bullets, just to see where our baseline is. Let's make some science. Alrighty. Sweet. We could make fancy targets out of resin and ballistics gel, but we're going with a more old-fashioned approach. Honeydew melons. They're about the same size as a human head, and for our purposes, about as dense. Range Master, your call. Are we hot? We're hot. Range is hot. <laughs> the melon has been obliterated. The largest piece on the ground is about the size of a deck of cards. Now we move on to 44 Magnum Blanks. This is the closest we can come to recreating that original fatal accident almost 30 years ago. I literally have no idea what's going to happen this time. Running on a gunshot. The melon is still there, but the blast has ripped it open. There's no projectile in there. That's just a ball of burning gas. Let's take a look how far it went in. Five and a half inches. And it completely opened it. Yeah. It's not even just the <laughs> cavity. Yeah. It completely opened it. And that'd actually be more fatal if that was a human skull. Because you would have entered through the nose cavity and the whole explosion would have been contained in the human skull. Thus <sighs> liquefying everything inside. Yeah. That's fatal. This is death, no matter how you slice it. Yeah. Sooner or later, this is dead. I would venture to say in a body cavity that would still kill you or significantly maim you, even if it was in the chest or in the main torso. Right here would have, been would have, would have breached the sinuses. Mm -hmm. Would have probably sh shut stuff out your ears. Oh, yeah. yeah that's right. That, might, that same, same type of aperture, uh, same type of yeah. Eye that, gone. That may have been worse than if you actually shot him with a projectile. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that actually. In many because ways. that kind of force, ear gone, eye gone. Yeah, everything's mush. Everything in there just. And even if you were hitting an extremity, five inches penetration, you're going to hit a major oh, yeah. artery. Oh, yeah. Chest. Just one way or the other. Chest, Abdomen, yeah. Because remember, arms we're shooting legs. into a melon. Yeah. A melon does not have the same density as a human skull. So, it, like I said, if you got hit here on the mouth, Mm -hmm. Anything mm -hmm. that would penetrate, you know, has, a, has an open orifice to the, to, the, to the head would contain that whole explosion within the human skull. Yep. So this is actually worse case scenario than if you shot him. Because it, it would actually have a traveling object going through causing a, almost like a venting. Yeah. Ugh. So now we have one result. It's not the annihilation of an actual round, but it's still devastating. Let's see what happens if we try it again. Smoke coming out of that. That is powder is still burning. Intense. It's basically split it in five sections. Yeah. While not as powerful as regular bullets, blanks still have a devastating amount of force. Ten, I think. Six inches. That's how deep that blast went into this thing. 
just a blank. This is why I fucking hate the phrase just blanks. Because look at this. That that's death. That's death from just a blank. Oh yeah. And it's an ugly, nasty death too. I don't know if that would have changed. Now we're moving on. Nine millimeter PA is one of the most commonly used blank fire only rounds on the market. It's used in a lot of stage performances and small films, so let's see what it's capable of on the range. And it liquefied all of this. Yeah. This was solid melon flesh when it started. All this, see, see how it, it's like applesauce now. And. It penetrated three and a half inches. Look at this. This is just turned like that. That entire area is soup. That's just fucking creepy to look at. You know, nothing but a burning chemical reaction happening instantaneously. Blew a hole three and a half inches deep into something the size of a human head. Now here's our last caliber of the day, 380 full load. Perfect. Four and a half inches. Damn. The, this looked like it was more like a hammer blow driving a nail rather than just a spread out going everywhere. Nothing near in comparison to the 44, but still dead. I was about to say. Even if that doesn't kill you, I'd almost rather be shot with a 44. That way I know I'm dead. Yeah. I mean, look at that. That uh, almost looks like a channel that a bullet would make. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost a perfect. Yep. But like a ballistics gel almost. And, and that's the smallest, weakest round that we have here. Jeez. So what we've learned is the next time somebody says they're just blanks, Grab by the them. collar and slap the shit out of them. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> and there you have it. Blanks are designed to be less powerful than fully sized cartridges, but the wounds they create are very real and very deadly. So, what do we make of all of this? I could say just, hey, don't play Russian roulette no matter what the gun's loaded with, but that restates the obvious and isn't a whole lot of help. Or I could repeat what the industry's been saying for the last 30 years and say that if you're going to use guns or any sort of weapon on a set, you need someone in your crew who knows how to use them and how to handle them safely. And while that's certainly true, it doesn't tell the entire story. Like it or not, we are living in the age of the micro-budget. The old saying used to be, all I need for a theater is four boards, four trestles, two players, and a passion. Well, nowadays, all you need is a camera, a computer, a connection, and a passion, and you are a filmmaker, whether the old guard likes it or not. And the problems for this kick in when entire features are being made for less money than your average fighter ranger makes in a day. So the uncomfortable questions become, do fighter rangers devalue their skills, charge less for smaller projects? Do filmmakers just cut action sequences out altogether? Or do they try to save money by not hiring a fighter ranger and trying to do it all themselves? I don't have any easy answers. And since I'm a fighter ranger myself, I'm not going to sit here like I don't have a dog in the fight. But I'm a filmmaker too. So I will leave you with this. When you direct a project, it's like being the captain of a ship. The safety and well-being of every single member of your cast and crew becomes your personal responsibility. So whatever it is you wind up doing, stay safe out there, okay? <laughs>